Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about a really interesting and deep connection between logic, computation and type theory that's called the Curry-Howard correspondence. It's the idea that these three seemingly quite disparate academic disciplines are actually three sides of the same coin, if you could have a coin with three sides somehow. Proof isn't just something that gives us knowledge that something is true. Rather, a proof is an object in its own right. It's got this kind of structure that allows us to run it like a program. So there is this deep link between logic and the notion of computability of running a proof in a computer. And within this area of computer science, the idea is that it is the execution or the possible execution of these kind of programs that gives these formulas their meaning. The Curry-Howard correspondence is named after two logicians, Haskell Curry and William Howard, both American, both lived throughout the 20th century. Uh, I think Howard is still alive. They were both very technical logicians working on proof theory and its relationship to computer science. Their ideas have been very, very influential, as we'll see. Haskell Curry, in particular, is a very interesting character. Early on in his career, he worked on combinatory logic, which maybe it's not used so much today. You know, you don't see it so much in logic textbooks, but it's a very powerful mathematical formalism that kind of does the same thing as the lambda calculus. The programming language Haskell is named after him, as is Curry's paradox. I've got another video on that as is the idea of currying in type systems. So that is like, rather than having a function that takes in, say, two numbers, a pair of numbers, and gives you back a number, like addition would do, we could instead say, oh, let's take in one number and then take in another number and give a number back. So rather than saying this function is a pair of numbers to a number, we say it's from a number to a number to a number. That's the process of currying, named after Haskell Curry. So there is this slogan that you get in this area of research. A proof is a program and a formula is a type or a proposition is a type, kind of meaning the same thing. OK, what does that mean? Let's explain both parts of that and that will give us a good understanding of what the Curry-Howard correspondence is. So let's start by thinking of a function as having a certain type. For instance, numerical functions might take us from numbers to numbers. That just means it's got a number as its input and it gives us a number as its output. So the successor function, the plus one function, that is a function from numbers to numbers, from integers to integers. Addition, that takes us from a pair of numbers to a number. Or to put it a slightly different way, it takes us from a number to a number to a number. You put in one number, then you put in another number, and you get out a number, the sum of both of those numbers. So we can express the type of a function like this, specifying what kind of inputs it needs and what kind of outputs it's going to give. And then we can reason about what kind of outputs it's going to give based on the kind of input like this. If we've got a function from type alpha to beta and I feed in something of type alpha, then I'm going to get out an object of type beta. Now, just think about that kind of inference I've done. It's got this form from alpha arrow beta and alpha to beta. Beta. That looks just like modus ponens. But here we weren't talking about sentences and truth values. We were talking about functions and their type. OK, but it's just the same inference that I would use if I was doing natural deduction style reasoning on propositions, thinking about whether they're true or not. And this is part of the Curry-Howard correspondence, the idea that propositions in logic are really just types. And the kind of logic that we do on propositions, it's kind of just type theory. For each of the rules that we would give about reasoning with propositions, we've got corresponding rules allowing us to reason about the types of functions. So that's half of this slogan. A proof is a program, a formula is a type. But what about the first half? A proof is a program. That seems a bit harder to understand because like my experience of a proof is this kind of squiggly thing I write down on a piece of paper, whereas a program is something that I can put in a computer and hit run. So how does that work? 
So the key idea here is the notion of a proof term, a term that somehow captures everything that's going on in a proof. It's a term that allows me to say, if I want to prove that thing, here's how to do it in a way that a computer can understand. I can run that proof term. It's basically a program. Now to write down proof terms, we're going to use the lambda calculus. Lambda calculus, it's a bit complicated, but basically we're looking at a notation for naming functions. So for instance, if I took this logical sentence phi x and I'm thinking in a kind of a logical vein about quantifying, I can write in front for all x phi x to mean that everything has this property. But a different way of thinking about it is I can turn it into a function. I can put lambda x at the front. So the lambda binds the x just like the universal quantifier did. But here I'm really thinking about a function. This is a name for a function that's going to take in some object x. And if I put in, say, object a, it's going to return the proposition phi of a. So that's a way of thinking about lambda calculus for logicians who are used to sentences like phi a. But in a pure lambda calculus, we're really just going to build up expressions using basic terms and lambda terms. Given any term, I can abstract to a lambda term. And given two terms of the right type, I can apply them together, just like applying a function to an argument. Lambda calculus is super, super interesting and super important in computer science, philosophy increasingly, linguistics. We don't need to know too much about it to understand about how proof terms work in the curry howard correspondence. So if the last little bit made no sense, don't worry too much about it. It's a bit easier to see how they work in practice. Let's just pause on the proof terms for a sec and look at a formula, a logical formula. This is one of the Hilbert axioms. Let's just see how we would do a natural deduction proof of this formula, and then we'll get back to the proof terms. OK, because this is a formula involving only implication, I've got no premises here. I'm just trying to prove this one formula as a conclusion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume the antecedent and try and reason to the consequent. And again, we've got uh, an implication. So again, I'm going to assume the antecedent, try and get to the consequent. And it's still an implication I'm aiming at. So again, assume the antecedent, try and reason to the consequent. Now, once I've got all of those assumptions in place, it's just a case of applying a simple case of modus ponens here and here. And then that completes the proof. Because from assuming this, I reason to this. That gives me this. And because I assume this and reason to this, we get this. And that gives me the sentence I was looking to prove in the first place. OK, so there's a natural deduction proof of that sentence. Now let's have a look at how it looks when we annotate this with proof terms. So what I'm looking at here is not so much a logical proof. Rather, I am declaring that term x is going to be of type beta to gamma. And term y is going to be of type alpha to beta. And term z is going to be of type alpha. I am just declaring these things. Now I'm going to do some reasoning. If I apply y to z, then that term, that application term, is going to be of type, well, y is from alpha to beta and z is type alpha. So yz is going to be of type beta. And then I can apply x to that because x is of type beta to gamma. So x applied to y applied to z is going to be of type gamma. So there we've got a little bit about the types of terms using modus ponens style reasoning about the types. Now we can abstract on those terms. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a term that might not be a function and I'm abstracting on it, kind of like giving it an extra argument place, turning it into a function. So if I take a term of type beta and I abstract using a variable of type alpha, I've given myself a function from alpha to beta. So here, for instance, from x, y, z of type gamma, I can abstract on z. z is of type alpha. So I get a function from type alpha to type beta. Do the same thing here on y. y is a alpha to beta type. OK, so I get something from type alpha beta to type alpha to gamma. And finally, I abstract on x, x being type beta to gamma, and I get this term here of this type, OK? This is the proof term for this proof, the original 
natural deduction style proof we did of this proposition. Okay, so we can think of that in one of two ways according to the Curry Howard correspondence. I've got this proof of this logical proposition. Flip it around, I've got a proof term, which is a function, and the type of that function is the proposition that I proved. Isn't that really cool? And then the idea is I can kind of take this function and running this function just tells me how to do the proof. Now, this is a super simple system. We've only looked at one connective here. We've just got implication. and So we've got really simple abstraction and application on, on functions. But once we think about all the other logical connectives, they are going to correspond to different kinds of type constructors. So conjunction, for instance, will correspond to forming pairs of things and they're going to have product types. And taking this even further, you've got people like Per Martin Lof, the, the Swedish logician who develops a whole constructive type theory. Modern type theory, modern constructive type theory, it just adds more and more complexity. But based on this very you know, reasonably simple idea embodied in the Curry Howard correspondence. So Martin Lof, constructive type theory, the kind of type theories that underlie proof assistants like Koch and Lean, and really recent developments like homotopy type theory that claim to be complete foundations for mathematics, kind of alternatives to set theoretic foundations that retain this idea of constructability in the way we give proofs. This is all really, really fascinating and complicated and meaningful stuff. And it's all based around this really, really nice idea that we have this correspondence between proofs on the one hand and programs on the other. I know that a bunch of you guys out there are really into your programming and computer science, so I would love to see you guys discussing these kind of ideas down in the comments. If you have got something out of this content, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to buy me a coffee over on Ko-Fi, that's always great. Thank you so much for watching this far. I really appreciate it. Thanks to all my Ko-Fi supporters for making this content possible. And I hope to see you guys back on Attic Philosophy soon.